All right, we're doing a little musical chairs here, but that's okay. <laughs> we're back on the Morning Brew, and our next guest have joined us at the table, as you can see. Uh, we have Jonathan Cottrell here, who is executive director of what's called the Semicolon Tattoo Project, and Jeremy Jaramillo, who is associate director for the Agora Crisis Center. Guys, welcome to the Morning Brew. Thank you. Thanks for having us here. Yeah, thank yeah. you for having us on. So what are we talking about today? What is this uh, semicolon tattoo project? So the semicolon tattoo project was kind of based out of this, it, it really got started on a lark. So I had a good friend named Josh White who uh, runs a massage company called Poor Vita Therapeutics. And he got together with a guy uh, who uh, was gonna be tattooing at King's Creation. And so what ended up happening was he kind of came up with this idea of, well, what if we make this thing a tattoo event? So the origin of the imagery is it just was something that popped up on Facebook and Tumblr. Mm -hmm. um, and it was very simple. It was, you know, draw a semicolon on your wrists on this particular day if you're, um, if you've ever, experienced or got, had a friend who's gone through, you know, uh, anything to do with suicide, self-harm, oh. uh, and just generally any, any mental health problems. Hmm. And it was to show solidarity in the community. Um, and it got brought up and it was like, hey, what if we did a tattoo for this? Because then we could show that representation every day. That's so powerful. Um, such a small, such a simple symbol, it's just so powerful. And I mean, the imagery itself comes from this idea that an author could end a sentence with a period, but instead they used a semicolon and they carried on. Keep on going. Yeah. So we use that as a metaphor. Great imagery. Mm -hmm. it's, it's wonderful imagery. And then, so it just kind of started like that. And then I grabbed a hold of the project and with the help of uh, Josh and Lane Looper from Signal One Through Media, we went ahead and said, all right, we're gonna do this, but I had six days last time, now I've got six months. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, I remember great. I got a call from John about a year ago, uh -huh. and he says, you know, I wanna do this fundraiser thing, and, and he just kinda ran with it. Um, and he said he wanted to give us some of the money at the Agora Crisis Center, and that was really helpful, and it was, of course, it's uh, relevant, because we're a crisis center. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's a great, Leave a lead off point here, Jeremy. Yeah. We're, uh, t tell us about the uh, Crisis Center, what kind of work you do. Okay? Yeah. So we're an OSU helpline. We actually started in 1970. We take calls about anything, but we're really su funded for suicide prevention. We believe that suicide prevention is talking about anything at all. So if any of your viewers are having a hard day, relationships, mental health issues, anything at all, they can give us a call. We're free, confidential. Um, you know, and you know, our, our phone number is 277-3013. You can reach us at agoracares.org as well. Um, we have a chat line. We have our phone lines. We have a new substance abuse line. Uh, we back up hmm. the United Way 2-1-1 referral line. So we're pretty, we're pretty busy spot. I bet we you run are. with volunteers, and uh, we have a pretty small staff. So and you have really extensive training for the volunteers yes. too, which uh, I'm sure is 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 really really um, intense. It, it is intense. I think that it takes a really good person to be able to volunteer with us. And, but um, life-saving. But they change, it's they life really save, save lives, change lives, improve lives. We help people become self-aware even of, the, of who they are and, and you know, where they want to go next. And you know, we run on a shoestring budget. A, a fundraiser like this is very helpful to us. And you know, anyone who wants to help this, us out. Yeah, this seems like a, a natural collaboration then. Well, I mean, one of the things is the uh, owner of the tattoo shop that uh, this all got started at is somebody who had actually done work on me before. Um, and I also volunteer with Agora. Yeah. Um, so, the so, are... so the link was already there, right. and it was easy to go down and say, so this little event you're having, do you mind if, I, if we turn it into a fundraiser? And Greg nice. King at uh, King's Creation was like, well, I hadn't really thought about it. Do you have an organization in mind? And I said, well, well by chance I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we have volunteers really all, lo all over the city, state, and world. Uh, we've been around since 1970. We train about 150-ish people a year. So even yeah. a wow. woman in your other segment with B2B, yeah. uh, she, uh, Micah, is a volunteer of ours too. She actually connected that's us nice. with you all. So we're, we're really well, happy wonderful. to be here. Well, that's great. <laughs> 
Um, how many how many staff do you have? Do you have therapists on hand at all times, we, or, as, or as best you can? We have uh, at any given time we have about four people on our lines. We we have a pretty small um, paid staff. We uh -huh. only have. Uh, three full-time staff and five part-time staff. Uh, we run with these very well-trained paraprofessional volunteers, like like you were saying. Uh, they go through 40 to 60 hours of training, um, and some of them don't make it, of course. Some of them do. Sure. Uh, but, yeah, we pretty much are the recruiting model for the country. I happen to mm. be a national accreditor of crisis centers, and, you know, we do some pretty amazing things with small amounts of paid staff and a lot of volunteers that are just great, amazing people that want to do something great for our society. So Jeremy, how did you become passionate about becoming, a, you know, going yeah. to Agora and helping people? Uh, the, the, the short of it is uh, I, I was an art, art architecture student at UNM and I kind of, I started to see some things in my <coughs> friends and family life that they've been incurred some difficult situations or, or uh, experienced some hardships and thought that, you know, I've got to do something about it. And public health nonprofit became a hobby of mine while I was in um, college. And then I just kind of switched to it. I realized that was my passion. So I'm Your very happy to, work. yeah, I'd be much more happy to do that and much more driven to do that. And I still love art, but mm -hmm. um, not as much as nonprofit and helping people out. Great. So how do people get involved with Agora mm -hmm. and with the semicolon? Okay. Uh, with Agora, agoracares.org. Mm -hmm. uh, Agora jump on that website and you can find you know, how to volunteer, what we're about. Uh, we're actually starting a new training in a, in a few weeks, so if anyone wants to, it's, oh, it's time. Oh, cool. um, <clears throat> then I'll let John talk about how to get involved in the semi. So getting involved with the Semicolon Tattoo Project is literally as easy as finding the Facebook page or um, and messaging the page or um, my email is listed mm -hmm. there as well, so you can get a hold of me there. And on Facebook? Okay. Uh, on Facebook, yeah, it's sure. facebook.com slash semicolon tattoo. Um, and then my email is just simply jon at signal13media.com. And what's your background, John? What, what do you bring to this? Uh, my background is I was a psychology student at UNM, um, and I have been off and on for a very long time. Uh, and I heard I've heard the uh, the classroom Agora pitch uh, mm -hmm. dozens and dozens of times, but I've now graduated to giving that pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, but basically, the um, you know it's something that I'd always kind of thought about doing, and in the beginning, like and I think for a lot of people they hear that Agora gives great letters of recommendation and, and things like that. Which we do. But... Um, which they absolutely do, <laughs> but. You know, we went through training, and after the first week on the phones, it wasn't about that anymore. Yeah, it was. It was about being passionate about this work, about um, listening to people and helping guide them toward resources and uh, suicide prevention and self harm prevention and just connecting a community to things that they otherwise just wouldn't have access to. Mm -hmm. um, and then when the semicolon project kind of came out of nowhere and I just kind of sideways got involved with it and it was something nobody else was doing and I figured somebody ought to. Yeah. I'll, I'll say for John, I mean, he's a great photographer and he's made this into not just an, a fundraising event but also like a, a piece. Of, you know, it's, a, it's a work of art. It's a lot of um, people getting their tattoos and he's made mosaic photographs of it. And there, there's a lot to it other than just you know, an event which is, is a big thing within itself. Yeah. He's really put together a lot of a everybody shops and such like that. So it, it's, it's been a great thing. Everybody who shows up gets a portrait to commemorate their new ink. Um, <laughs> and what, a photo of their wrist, or uh, it's yeah. it's it's a you know thing. a waist yeah. up photo. Yeah. Um, so some people get them on their feet or whatnot, but oh, we I at see. least we at least give them a, a portrait of themselves. But anybody who gets a tattoo on their upper body um, gets a portrait so I mean you know I've got oh, mine that's amazing. That's it. Yeah. Um, and yeah. you know just kind of the the standard uh, poses you know that's holding amazing. up your fist you know sure. just kind of in defiance of I I'm still here keep it going yes um, so the event is the 15th uh -huh. um, it'll be at eight different tattoo shops across uh, the city and uh, you know we 
We'll hope to see you guys there. Absolutely. We'll, we'll get you an ankle tattoo or something. <laughs> you know, I've never wanted a tattoo, but I might consider but, okay. doing something and like that's, this. That's, we're yeah. going gonna to hold you to that. I, I definitely... Uh, There's actually a very interesting st statistic um, around that, which is, from what I saw last year, roughly a third of the people it was their very first tattoo mm -hmm. and one of the great things about this project is that there's no demographic mm -hmm. um it's not no boundaries it, no. Was, it was not just younger people or older people that showed up it's not just uh any particular gender that showed up mm -hmm. it was you know take the demographic of albuquerque and that was the demographic. Interesting. Every people from all walks of life yeah. showed Please up. Tell us again where we go, where and when. Okay, so March 15th. Um, there's a lot of shops. Check it out right. semicolon event on Facebook. On Facebook. Um, but Por Vida, King's Creation. Um, I don't know. Uh, so we have King's Creation, Por Vida Tattoo, um, Aces Tattoo, Archetype Demographic, um, Ascension Body Modification. Uh, Blue Jay Tattoo up in Rio Rancho, and 71 Tattoo, and Stay Gold. Right. Right. Guys, we'll see you thank, thank you so much. Thank Thanks you for being here. Thank you. Right. We're going to come on the Morning Brew right after this.